The Battle of Ganale Doria was a battle in 1936 during the Second Italo-Abyssinian War. It was fought on the southern front. The battle consisted largely of air attacks by the Italian Royal Air Force, under the command of General Rodolfo Graziani, against an advancing and then withdrawing Ethiopian army under Ras Desta Damtu. The battle was primarily fought in the area along the Ginale Doria River valley between Dolo and Nigale Boran. Ras Damtu launched an Ethiopian offensive against the Italian forces in Italian Somali land. However, Graziani carried out his active defense so vigorously that it became an offensive. Chapter 1 Background In early 1935, Italian forces were preparing to invade Ethiopia from Eritrea. Only one Italian division, the Italian 29 Division Peleritana Vertical Bar 29 TH Peleritana Infantry Division, had been allotted to the Southern Front, while the Northern Front had 10. General Rodolfo Graziani was in charge of the Southern Front, his role was expected to be entirely defensive. His orders from General Emilio de Bono were to dig in and wait for the Ethiopians to attack. Graziani set out to convince de Bono's commander, Italian dictator Benito Mussolini, that the plans for the campaign needed to be changed to allow him and his army on the southern front to play a more active role. Mussolini wanted action, and was willing to listen. In the end, Graziani's plan for an offensive on the southern front had the tacit approval of Rome if not de Bono. Between April and December, Graziani opened up new roads, developed the port facilities at Mogadishu, solved a difficult water supply problem, stocked up provisions and munitions, and purchased hundreds of motor vehicles. He successfully acquired American-made trucks from British dealers in Mombasa and Dar es Salaam. On 3 October 1935, when de Bono launched his invasion in the north without a declaration of war Graziani was logistically prepared for an advance on Harar in the south. However, Graziani's forces were still relatively few in number and they faced an enemy numbering approximately 80,000 strong. In addition to numbers, the soldiers of the two principal Ethiopian armies on the southern front were said to be better trained and better equipped than the soldiers of the armies de Bono faced in the north. The Ethiopian commanders in the south were young, progressive, and loyal, dedicated to Haile Selassie's cause. Chapter 2 Institution of the Milan Plan When de Bono's forces crossed the Marib River in the north, Graziani instituted what he called the Milan Plan in the south. The initial objectives of this plan were to eliminate Ethiopian frontier posts and to test the Ethiopian reaction to a series of probes. Despite the incessant rains, within three weeks the Italians had captured the villages of Kelifo, Dagnarai, Gologubai, and Gorhai. Gorhai, the most important of the villages, was known as an old stronghold of Darawish, and Diary Egu's emir, called the Mad Muller by the British. With approximately 3,000 fighters under his command, Grasmuk and Balambara's Afarwalk Walder Samayat had turned Gorhai into an armed camp. Capronis of the Italian Royal Air Force regularly bombed Gorhai and Afarwalk himself directed the fire of the lone anti-aircraft gun, a 37mm Orlikon. The gun was mounted in one of the old-style turrets of the Mad Muller's antiquated fort. During one of the regular bombings, a far walk was seriously wounded. He refused to be taken to the hospital because he feared that the morale of his men would suffer in his absence. Within 48 hours the wound became gangrenous and a far walk collapsed and died. He was posthumously promoted to de Jasmuk by the emperor. A far walk was correct about the morale of his men and, after his death, they abandoned Gorhai. After taking the position, Graziani sent a flying column under Colonel Pietro Maletti to catch and harass the fleeing Ethiopians. Maletti caught up with the Ethiopians only to have them turn back and attack. At an alley, the Ethiopian force fleeing from Gorhai was joined by a relief force, sent to reinforce the garrison at Gorhai. A meeting encounter ensued and casualties were high among the Ethiopians and the Italians. After several hours, both sides withdrew and both claimed victory. While better equipped in all ways, the Italians were never able to get the upper hand. 
the small two-man, turretless L3-35 tankettes sent against the Ethiopians quickly bogged down in the rough terrain and were put out of action by Ethiopians who crept up on them and fired through the weapon slits in the armor. The Italians advanced 145 miles in four days. This brought them almost within striking distance of Gijiga, Hara, and Ethiopia's only railway. But the forces available to Graziani remained limited and by November the initiative on the southern front passed to the Ethiopians, as it did in the north. Chapter 3, Battle Ras Desta descended from the Bale Plateau, assembling the army of the Sidamo at Nigail Boran. This army was considered to be well armed by Ethiopia standards and numbered approximately 20,000 men. His goal was to advance down the Ganel Doya River and to then continue his advance down the Juba River. From Nigail Boran, Ras Desta planned to march approximately 200 miles south and capture the border town of Dolo, then invade Italian Somaliland itself. This plan was ill-conceived and overly ambitious. It also lost the element of surprise as it became common knowledge and was the subject of marketplace gossip. In addition to the army of the Sidamo, the 4,000-strong army of the Bale, under Dijazmuk Bina Merid, was to advance down the Shabale River and invade the center of Somalia. Ras Desta's forces advanced in three columns. Two columns were led by his two fitteris Adame Anbesu and Tademi Zelika. Kenya's Makbazibi Silshi commanded a relatively modern guards battalion. The army of the Bale was able to move forward more quickly due to the better terrain in its area. In November, advancing elements of this force clashed with about 1,000 Ubats of the pro-Italian Olol Dinal. Both sides eventually withdrew from the battlefield, with Bina Merit seriously wounded. Its commander stricken, the army of the Bale retreated, leaving the army of the Sidamo, was on its own. Dot on the 13th of November, Graziani moved his headquarters to Baidoa. The 29th Peleritana Division was still the only full division available to him. By mid-November, limited elements of the Libyan Colonial Division and the 6th Tavare Blackshirt Division were in Somalia. As additional forces arrived later in November, Graziani formed them up at Dolo near the border. By early December. Graziani's forces were in a state of readiness to launch a counterattack against Ras Desta's offensive and Graziani's new commander, Marshal of Italy Pietro Badoglio, noted this preparedness. Badoglio sent Graziani a telegram reminding him of his strictly defensive role. Graziani feigned compliance with Badoglio but communicated privately with Rome and urged that he be given authorization for an offensive. Mussolini gave Graziani permission for a limited attack in the case of absolute necessity and Graziani took this as the authorization he needed. Even as the Ethiopians advanced, Graziani continued his preparations. He organized his forces into three columns. On the Italian right was the first column which was to advance up the valley of the Genale Doria River. In the center was the second column which was to advance towards Filtu. On the left was the third column which was to advance up the valley of the Dor River. All three columns had access to motor transport and were equipped with a few tanks. They could be thought of as mechanized by the standards of 1936. In addition to the three columns on the ground, Graziani had at his disposal the 7th Bomber Wing of the Royal Air Force. On 12 January the Royal Air Force started the Italian response to the Ethiopian advance by dropping two tons of mustard gas on the Ethiopians. For three days the advancing Ethiopians were attacked incessantly from the air. The Ethiopian force that the Italian outposts already had taken casualties and been disorganized. The combination of air attacks, a long march through a desert, inadequate rations, as well as dysentery and malaria, had shattered the morale of Ras Desta's army. On 15 January, when the three Italian columns advanced, Ras Desta's battered forces repeatedly retreated without putting up serious resistance. Even so, the Ethiopians did stand and hold their ground in the area where the Ganail Doya River and the Dor River joined to become the Juba River. This was referred to by the Italians as the Battle of the Three Rivers. 
The Italian mechanized columns responded with a series of outflanking maneuvers which quickly compelled the Ethiopians to withdraw. Unfortunately the weary army could not withdraw fast enough as it was again assaulted from the air. The Ethiopians' withdrawal quickly became a disorganized retreat. In this unequal chase, the Ethiopians were on foot and the Italians were generally in motor vehicles. The Italians blocked the few wells that lay along the way and closely pursued the parched Ethiopians. Ras Desta's army soon disintegrated. Chapter 4 Aftermath. On 20 January, within five days of their start, all three of Graziani's columns had reached their objectives. As a testament to the thoroughness of the job that the Royal Air Force had done, no shots were fired when the Italians converged on and entered their ultimate objective, Nigel Boran. The rout of Ras Desta's army was complete. On 24 January, during the mopping up actions which followed, Graziani gave orders to the air commander, burn and destroy all that is inflammable and destructible, bomb neighboring woods with gas and incendiaries. Mussolini said that there was to be no truce. Ras Desta fled by mule to Addis Ababa, narrowly escaping capture. One detail did detract from Graziani's triumph. About halfway through the battle, over 900 of his Eritrean troops deserted. Graziani's response was to order the corpses of the Eritrean dead left to rot on the field where they fell. Over 1,000 Eritrean deserters were said to have fought on the Ethiopian side at the Battle of Machu. Having taken the ground intended and having reached Wadera, Graziani now cautiously withdrew his forces approximately 60 miles to Nigel Boran to allow food and munitions to catch up. The southern front was the subordinate front and the war on the northern front was not yet going well for the Italians. The Christmas offensive was pressing the Italians hard, and they had priority for supplies and reinforcements.